Hi, I'm Wouter and welcome to part two of my Sparkle tutorial. Uh, this time we'll be looking into select queries. We'll look into how they are composed out of different components and how these components relate conceptually to the table that is the result of the select query. So starting off, in part one I introduced you to the four different Sparkle forms. Those are ask, uh, construct, describe and select. And I also explained to you in part one what the differences are and why you would want to use uh, these different uh, Sparkle forms in different circumstances. Today we'll dive into the select query and if you remember from the part one, uh, the select query allows you to match a knowledge graph and uh, returns the result in a table. So let's start by looking into how the select query is related to the table conceptually. So in this overview, I show the concepts that we all already understand, uh, the concepts that relate to a table and how they align with concepts in a Sparkle select query. And as you can see, in a table you have columns, so they, they are the vertical subdivisions of the tabular format, and they correspond in Sparkle select queries to variables. So we will use variables in Sparkle to denote columns in the select and result. Furthermore, we have cells in a table. Those are the little blocks that contain the actual data items and those correspond to bindings in Sparkle. What's a binding in Sparkle? A binding is a specific value that is bound to, the name already carries this meaning in it, so that's a variable that is bound to a specific value and that specific value that is bound to a variable is called a binding. So in other words, the variable denotes the column and then within the column you have multiple cells and each cell contains one binding for the variable. And finally, in the table we of course have the rows where each row corresponds to one data unit and in Sparkle we refer to those data units, individual data units as results. So these are the three important concepts of a select query and how they relate to the table. Now let's take a look at how uh, a Sparkle query is constructed and how it relates to those three concepts. So in this overview I show the four components that compose each select query. So each select query in Sparkle always contains these four components, the prolog, uh, the projection, the pattern and the modifier. Let's go through those briefly. So the prolog is the initial part of the Sparkle select query, which contains some declarations that are used throughout the query. And that's basically where you do a little bit of stage setting. So where you introduce some terminology or some abbreviations that you will later use in the query. Uh, the prologue is not a very important part of the Sparkle query. It's mostly there for convenience purposes. We'll look into it in a later uh, episode in more detail. Then we have the projection. And the projection is very important because that specifies the columns in the table. So the projection is going to contain a specific number of variables and those variables are going to correspond with columns in your tabular result. The third component of a Sparkle select query is the pattern. And the pattern is where you specify how you want to match the knowledge graph and how each match results in the bindings that will appear as the cells in your table. So the pattern is where you specify the actual contents of your table. And then finally, the modifier. That's the component of your Sparkle query where you specify or where you perform additional operations on the row level. So you can, for instance, uh, reorder the rows or you can only extract certain rows and not extract other rows. Uh, think of this as some of the operations that you can also do in spreadsheet programs. There you can also reorder a table based on a certain uh, selection. That's also what you can do in Sparkle in the modifier. So let's also briefly look into a specific uh, Sparkle select query. Uh, so this is a very simple one. And let's see whether we can find the four components in this simple Sparkle query. Uh, so at the top right here, this part, which says select question mark S question mark P question mark O, this is the projection. 
and you can see that whenever I use the hash character I can actually introduce a comment. A comment starts where the first hash character starts and runs all the way to the end of the line. There is no such thing in Sparkle as multi-line comments. In some programming languages you have those. Sparkle only has these single line comments but you can of course introduce multiple lines of comments by introducing uh, multiple hash characters. Very good. So this first line is containing the projection and this is specifying the columns that you want to have in your tabular result. And in this particular example we will have a column for S, a column for P and a column for O. Now you see that I'm using these question mark S, question mark P, question mark O, so these are uh, variables. Variables are start, always start with, uh, with a question mark uh, in, uh, in Sparkle. But I did not choose them uh, just arbitrarily because the S actually corresponds to the RDF notion of a subject term, the P corresponds to the RDF notion of a predicate term, and the O corresponds to the notion of an object term. And this will also reappear in the pattern because the pattern occurs between these two curly brackets this is where it starts, this is where it ends. This is the actual body of the pattern and the pattern is specifying how we want to match the knowledge graph. So this is the pattern and if you remember from the previous slide the pattern is going to specify the bindings that make up the values in the cells. So this is where we specify the actual values for the cells. You can see now that the S, P and O that you already saw in the projection reappear in the pattern. And this is crucial because if we match something in a pattern, we can return it in the projection. But we can only return something in the projection if it also appears in the pattern. Because otherwise you don't know how to return things in the projection. You must also match them, of course, on the knowledge graph. So what this means is that I'm matching now a subject term, a predicate term and an object term in that order and this will correspond to one edge in the knowledge graph. In the knowledge graph there will be a node called the subject node, a second node called the object node and then connecting it there will be an arc and the label of the arc will be the predicate. So S, P, O will actually correspond to a specific edge that we will be mapping uh, from the knowledge graph. And then the last line, limit 10, that is our modifier. So this is modifying which rows we want to return. Specifically, we only want to return the first 10 rows. That's what the limit keyword means. So even though our knowledge graph may contain billions of edges, we only want to match 10 edges, no more than that. Now, if we go back to, the, to this overview, you see that we actually had four components in each Sparkle Select query. The one that we're still missing is the prologue, and that's true, because in this query the prologue is basically empty. So I can maybe in comments put it over here. In future episodes, we'll also see Sparkle Select queries with a non-empty prologue, but this one doesn't have one. And uh, maybe it's also good to see this query in action. So let's go to our web browser and we can go to a website called yasgui.triply.cc. I'll also put it in the description of this video. Uh, Yasgui is an open source Sparkle editor that is developed by Triply and uh, it allows you to query various Sparkle endpoints. It also gives you some feedback while typing in the query. So as you can see in this example, it uh, colorizes the different components of the Sparkle query and uh, it also allows you to select a specific endpoint. So we'll now, for demonstration purposes, we start with https colon slash slash dbpedia.org slash Sparkle, which is the Sparkle endpoint of dbpedia, the semantic web or the linked data version of Wikipedia. And this is exactly the query that I showed you earlier. So this is the projection, this is the pattern, and this is the modifier. Remember, we have no prologue there. We can press the play button to run the query, and then we see the result over here in a tabular format. And you can see that indeed S, P, and O, so that is our projection, those reappear now as the three columns of the table. Furthermore, you can also see 1, 2, 3 until 10 
So those are the 10 rows that were specified by our modifier. And the cells in the table are filled with various terms and those are specified in the pattern. Okay, so far so good. So this was our first select query. It's a very simple one. In the next episode, we'll look into how we can retrieve some more specific information from the knowledge graph. So this query is just retrieving some arbitrary triples, some arbitrary results, but we actually want to have specific results, namely the results that we're interested in with respect to a certain application. So join me next time when we look into more specific select queries.